Thank you so much. So this is the benefit analysis of the Romeo project. Uh, this is work from uh, Armani Zadi, um, Amy Seo, Nick Hines, and myself. Uh, if we go to the next slide, please. So the outline here is basically, I'm gonna present to you four uh, phases of the analysis. First of all, we did a, a survey. We conducted some uh, convective weather avoidance analysis to quantify you know, how the strategic maneuvers that pilots perform using this new product, the Romeo product. Then finally, we uh, programmed this, you know, a simulator, a fast time simulator to be able to do a simulation based analysis that will be able to characterize the, the savings or the travel time savings and any other benefit. And finally, there was a small injury and airframe benefits study to try to complement the, you know, the fuel and the travel time savings. So if we go to the next slide, uh, you will see that first of all, we need to acknowledge uh, the Wadig office, you know, Eldridge, uh, Gary, Kathy, uh, Matthias Steiner, and so on, because they provided certainly not only the financial, but also the technical support to the project. Uh, Armani Zadi was supported by a, a fellowship at, uh, you know, NCAR. And we also like to thank the U.S. airline pilots who provided, you know, very valuable survey feedback in the project, as well as to BCI, GoGo, and Panasonic. So uh, let's go to the next slide here. Um, you all know about the Romeo product, and I hear I use uh, 15 to 10 minutes. Uh, it was the update at, at the time of the product, I mean, on the evaluation. Uh, that was kind of the update rate that uh, Romeo was providing to the pilot. So again, uh, you have already seen uh, these kind of screens, you know, for both CDO and CTH. So if we go to the uh, to the next slide, I will probably just start with a very simple. Um, summary of what we actually did. Uh, we produced three technical reports. Uh, if you look at the left-hand side here, the first report, which was volume one, dealt with the review of the previous benefit studies. You know, the, we look at the surveys from a pilot uh, viewpoint. And then uh, the second report, they did the statistical analysis of the flights on how pilots actually would use this uh, product to be able to perform uh, weather deviations. And you can see also the dates of each particular study there at the bottom of the, you know, in those little rectangles. And finally, the simulation-based analysis and the injury analysis was uh, produced by June 2020. So these are three volumes that I think these reports are probably publicly available. So if anybody is interested, probably we can we can share those that information with you, or the WADIC, uh, the FAA office can do that for you as well. If we go to the next slide. Um, the summary findings here is that we did uh, we received about 110 surveys uh, with some uh, Romeo questions that we asked the pilots specifically, and you know the bottom line here was that pilots were very uh, you know they received the product very well, and in general they comment that Romeo provided an additional 10 minutes of time to be able to plan weather deviations compared to the you know the use of the onboard uh, weather radar here. So we wanted to evaluate, you know, how would that translate into potential benefits? Um, in terms of the weather deviation analysis, we analyzed about 18,200 or 326 flights that cross the intertropical convergence zone. And we found, you know, what is the typical deviation? What are the typical fuel savings that we could attribute um, if, the, if the product actually was used? And you can see some of the specifics there, but really the the start of this analysis was on the next slide, probably the fast time simulation work. Um, if we go to the next slide here, we found that simulating uh, thousands of uh, trajectories, flight trajectories, you know, in South America and North Atlantic uh, flights, we found that on the average, you know, about 115 kilograms of uh, fuel could be saved per flight, you know, translating to about 1.8 minutes travel time savings, again, keeping in mind that most of these flights are going to be performed by wide body aircraft. And, you know, we tried to annualize that, and that turned out to be around $15.3 million per year. Um, in terms of the injury, this is a little bit difficult to do, but we attempted to look at a database, you know, from, uh, you know, App Herald and other sources to look at how many uh, encounters with uh, bad weather exist out there and how many injuries exist. 
And we found that overall, maybe the, uh, an additional uh, savings that could be attributed to a product like Romeo could be on the order of maybe 5.5 million for the Atlantic Ocean flights and about 1.35 million for the South Pacific Ocean flight. So this is kind of the, the quick uh, review of the, of the benefits that we found in the program. I'm gonna tell you now the story about, you know, with more detail. So if we go to the next slide here, we will start with the, the pilot surveys. And again, the, the important information here is that the 110 surveys that we received, um, you know, 54% of the flights that actually did a survey uh, had to perform a weather deviation. So it was very well represented. Uh, the average deviation uh, for weather for these flights turned out to be about 29 nautical miles. And you can see the CDF, the cumulative density function there that shows the weather deviation. I mean, some of the weather deviations were actually pretty lengthy, more than 120 miles sometimes, especially over the Amazon basin. And what is so important here is to showcase that again, the pilots primarily commented that they could have an additional 10 minutes uh, of additional time to be able to plan the deviation. Not only that, they also were very, um, very positive about the amount of time that they could give to the cabin crew to be able to prepare you know, meal services or to suspend meal services when these weather events uh, happen to be lying ahead in the flight track. So if we go to the next slide, we will see that overall 95% of the pilot perceive the, the Romeo product to improve or offer equal situational awareness compared to the onboard radar. So you can see there that the pilots again did comment that Romeo will actually provide improved situational awareness under most of the scenarios. If we go to the next slide, uh, we will see here, we're gonna tell you about the historical analysis of the weather data. Again, Kathy at NCAR provided a lot of the Romeo information. So if we go to the next slide here, you will see that for this analysis, we analyze in great detail 18,306 or around 18,000 flights, depends on how you count, counting on 30 bi-directional origin destination pairs. We had a period of five months pre-Romeo, and then we had a, a post-Romeo period of 10 months to be able to evaluate this. And we found that overall, there were actually statistical differences in how pilots perform before and after Romeo. Um, an example here on the right-hand side is showing a, uh, an American Airlines uh, flight, you know, uh, that showing you know, that it was actually trying to avoid very large uh, convective weather uh, as it approached uh, Buenos Aires. And on the left-hand side, you see the kind of the workflow on how we dissected this information. We received the NCAR uh, raw data. We processed that into the polygons, and then we overlay the historical flight track to determine what was the travel time and the travel distance that these flights were able to uh, traverse, you know, uh, both uh, on the CTH side as well as on the CDO side. And that was important for us because we wanted to be able to put this in a fast time simulator to be able to determine, you know, how pilots in the future will be able to perform those deviation or weather detours. If we go to the next slide, we'll see an example of a, um, yeah, if we go to the next slide, please. Uh, if you hit the, the bar there to play, let's go ahead and play this animation. And again, this is a wide body aircraft that is uh, flying from um, South America to North America. And you can see that this particular flight is basically trying to avoid uh, convective weather over the Amazon, over the central part of uh, the Amazon um, basin. As you can see, the plane is actually going through the gaps and the plane is trying to do a lot of deviation maneuvers there. You know, there is very little uh, ground support here. And you can see that now the flight is obviously in a much better position. So the flight, the flight proceeds to Miami. But this gives you an idea that uh, a display like Romeo could offer a very substantial strategic uh, view of the weather ahead. This was a 240 nautical mile weather deviation. When you count, uh, you know, the file track that was actually filed against what actually was flown. And you can see that the pilot is again shooting for those gaps. So having Romeo actually has a potential benefit here because you can see well beyond what the onboard radar is gonna give you. If we go to the next slide, um, 
let's go ahead and see if we can see an example of these uh, maneuvers. So here we have an airplane flying at Mach 0.84. And again, you can see there that if the Romeo display allowed the pilot to, or this crew, to perform a weather deviation at uh, different points designated here by D1, D2, and D3, then the resulting savings are actually shown in the table here. This is just to demonstrate to you of what, you know, how we can actually measure uh, these uh, benefits. Obviously, we know that Romeo provided a 10 minute uh, look ahead compared to the onboard radar, weather radar. But the question for us was, was it really D1, D2, or D3? Was it that particular point in space where the pilot will actually initiate uh, the detour maneuver, you know, compared to the, the retract, which is what the pilot actually did. So let's go to the next slide here. And, uh, you know, we did this characterization for different types of flights, and these are just represented by the aircraft types on the left-hand side. So you see that all of these are wide-body aircraft from the Airbus A330 all the way up to the latest version of the Dreamliner, the 787-9. And you can see there the average travel time savings and the average fuel consumption savings. Again, this is from this historical analysis that we perform for the, for the flight tracks. And um, so let's go back. And this is how we derive, by the way, the 6.8 million um, you know, pounds of savings, actually, that we could estimate you know, for, from this analysis. But the real star really is going to be the fast time simulation, which is going to be explained next. So let's go to the next one here. So let's go and jump to the next slide. This is just a, a, a slide that shows what we are going to talk in the next few slides. So let's go to the next one, please. Uh, in order to do the fast time uh, simulation analysis, we rely on what is called a global oceanic model. This is a model that we had developed at Virginia Tech for the FAA uh, to do, you know, to evaluate advanced concept of operations over the ocean. And this is a, a uh, you know, a discrete time simulation that basically carries the equations of motion of the aircraft from origin to destination. Uh, we calculate fuel consumption. We do the track assignment in case you are flying, for example, the organized track system. We look at different ATC pilot exchanges. You know, so this simulator is basically trying to replicate what pilots and oceanic controllers are actually doing. We have uh, wind data. We have aircraft performance data based on BADA. 3.15 as well as BADA 4. And then we have a flight plan planning module that actually is able to plan the routes if you want to fly, uh, you know, basically user preferred routes. What is important here to mention is that in order for, to do this benefit analysis of the Romeo product, we had to reprogram the conflict detection and the resolution because now we are not only trying to avoid traffic, we were trying to avoid weather as well. If we go to the next slide here, you will see that the, you know, if you hit a return, please, one more time, you will see that we did some historical analysis and our analysis is basically trying to determine how comfortable pilots were uh, or uncomfortable in traversing some of these uh, contours, you know, that were being painted by the Romeo product on their iPad or on their Surface uh, tablets. So if you hit the next slide here, we will see that sometimes pilots will be uh, entering this, uh, you know, yellow contours, obviously, this is what we call event two, which is a more, a more drastic event that would potentially have more convective weather. If you hit the, the you know, any, any keyboard here, you will see the event number three, and then finally you will see event number four if you hit return. So we were trying to characterize how far pilots are going to stay away from the different contour levels of CDO, and we were able to also determine the, you know, how proximal they were to some of these contours. And the idea of this is that this is important because we needed to program or reprogram a simulator, a fast time simulator, the global oceanic model, to be able to replicate all of this in fast time, you know, in, in fast time simulation. So if we go to the next slide, uh, please, you will see that uh, basically the, the reprogramming of uh, the global oceanic model involves if you look at the right-hand side picture here in you know, creating surrogate paths as the vehicle approaches the convective weather represented by the CDO contours there on the right-hand side, and then determining what is the most likely path that this pilot will actually follow. You know, and of course, this is all done through a lot of the analysis of historical data, more than 18,000 flights, 
and then basically teaching the model on how to be able to respond when these contour levels are presented in front of the pilot. So you can see there are different surrogate paths, you know, labeled D1, D2, and D3. And you can see that there, there's going to be each one of these paths is going to have a minimum, uh, you know, closest point of approach to each one of those uh, CDO contours. So if we look at the next slide, you will see that uh, in order to actually do this sim simulation, if we hit the, the return key, uh, we actually simulated different traffic levels representing, you know, taken from uh, the traffic flow management system, TFMS. Uh, we actually used the baseline year was 2016, but we actually forecast the, you know, the flights to the year 2019 to represent a more robust traffic level. If we hit the next slide, I mean, the next, uh, uh, you know, yeah, we will see there that we also simulated high traffic days, you know, where there will be a lot more traffic. So these are just to give you an idea of the areas that we actually simulated, primarily flights going to South America, going to Europe, and then a few flights going to Africa, which are obviously could actually benefit from this kind of product as well. And you can see the actual flight numbers there that were simulated over a three-day uh, period. You know, this is again in the simulator. If we go to the next slide. Uh, we'll see that, uh, and let's hit the any of the keyboard again, just to bring in the statistics there. So we basically simulated scenarios, you know, moderately dynamic weather. I mean, Kathy provided a lot of different days of uh, weather in using Romeo. And we decided to, you know, model moderately dynamic and highly dynamic days. And then at the same time, we hypothesized that Romeo enable displays will provide either a five, a 10, uh, a 20 or even up to 40 minutes of, uh, uh, you know, time, look ahead time compared to the onboard weather radar, which is the baseline scenario, which is scenario number one. Now, the, the situation here, of course, is that every pilot, you know, will react or use Romeo differently. However, if we hypothesize that in general, 10 minutes look ahead compared to the onboard radar is possible, then we will be looking at probably scenario number three which is the Romeo enable scenario with a 30 minute look ahead of time. Now, the, as you will see later in the slides, sometimes if you try to plan way too much ahead, you may actually be in a situation where you may not actually save much because sometimes the convective weather, you know, in 30 minutes can either develop very quickly or disappear. So let's go to the next slide here. So these are the scenarios. Uh, this will be the view that a pilot will have. The first view was the pilot having the onboard radar where you start seeing the cells ahead of you with a Romeo enable scenario, 30 minute look ahead, you can see that now the pilot has more situational awareness of where the weather pattern is. If we hit one more key, uh, we will see 40 minutes ahead. So now you see where the cells actually happen to end. And finally with 60 minutes look ahead, if we go one more time, you the pilot can actually see that that cell, you know, is, is you know this the size of the cell is well known and you can better plan a, a, a deviation strategy so the romeo display again this is just to demonstrate how romeo is potentially enabling pilots to make more strategic decisions let's go to the next slide and here we have just a very quick summary of the flights that were you know this is again results from the fast time simulation model for the different scenarios that we simulated. So we have a combination of four scenarios, medium traffic with moderate uh, dynamic weather, medium traffic with high dynamic weather, and so on. And you can see there that the average uh, greenhouse and, and travel time savings, as well as the, you know, the fuel consumption savings are reported there. Uh, we divide the table into two because when Romeo uh, basically triggers a response from a pilot to be able to initiate a weather detour, some other flights are actually going to get affected. In other words, you may actually have traffic ahead that the controllers, the oceanic controllers are gonna have to move away or at least do something about it in order to avoid conflicts. So we report these two tables. And if you look at the bottom table here, uh, the average fuel consumption savings estimated for the flights that deviated from the original track due to weather is about 115 kilograms or about 363 uh, kilograms of uh, you know greenhouses uh, in terms of the savings for the flights that were affected by weather deviations uh, or flights that were deviating due to weather. The top table actually shows you the statistics. 
Let's go to the next slide. And we can see here that uh, this is just a pictorial representation of where these lateral deviation maneuvers occur for flights that were actually uh, deviating due to weather. And this is using the onboard uh, radar scenario. Um, again, looking at a 20 minute look ahead horizon. This 20 minute look ahead was given to us as a pilots as being the typical you know, horizon that they would uh, consider to be truthful in terms of the, what the radar is providing to them on board the, their cockpit. So you can see there, every dot here represents a, uh, a lateral deviation maneuver with the radar scenario. And we had about 683 deviations in this uh, simulation. If we go to the next slide, we will see the Romeo enable scenario with a 30 minute look ahead. Again, assuming that pilots, as they told us, they will have 10 more minutes to plan these deviations. And you can see that the weather deviations now have been reduced to 554. So Romeo, in this case, has a, a benefit because it will allow pilots to plan ahead the maneuvers. And in some cases, you know, they may have to deviate uh, less, actually. Uh, so, so this is, again, part of the benefit study that we have to do with the fast time uh, simulation model. If we go to the next slide, you will see that uh, these were the, the reduction in the number of lateral deviation maneuvers in the regions you know, that we simulated. So you can see in South America, it was about 2.8% reduction in the North, in the Atlantic, you know, controlled by a New York uh, Oceanic Center, the reduction was more substantial because there you have a lot of cross-flow traffic you know, coming from Europe and coming from uh, the Caribbean. So you have more benefits. There is about 10.3% uh, reduction in the lateral deviation maneuvers. By the way, the global oceanic model not only uh, can deviate laterally the flight, but also can slow down the flights or even climb the flights if they are capable of flying, fly, uh, climbing. And we maintain, you know, we have some uh, algorithms to be able to characterize that. Let's go to the next slide for a moment. So the, another potential benefit that this was done at the end of the study was, well, could Romeo really save any airframe cost or injury? Uh, mitigation. And again, this is an example of an Airbus A319 uh, you know, that was affected by some weather event uh, you know, over there. This is over the US, actually. And you can see that the radon was completely uh, destroyed there with the hail. Let's go to the next slide here. So we look at a database uh, from uh, App Herald and other sources over a 10-year period. We look, and we look at how many flights historically have injuries. And, uh, you know, the FAA had done a study by commission to MIT Lincoln Lab, where they have determined the injury value for a serious injury as a minor injury as well. So you can see that on the table. So the important here was to determine, you know, how often or how frequent these injuries occur. And the only kind of database that we could find here was the Aviation Herald. So we took 10 years of that data, and then we tried to create a simple model. If we go to the next slide. And this model basically characterized uh, the probability that this aircraft would encounter convective-induced incidents, uh, PC. And then you notice that there's a combination of probabilities being used here. Obviously, the, high, you know, the highest possible events here happen to be events of type 4 uh, using the Romeo display that we show you. But those events really occur very, very infrequently. As you can see there, the probabilities stated there, but nevertheless, when you do the extrapolation to annual flights, you know, when you consider 112,000 flights per year uh, in the North America, South America region, even a small probability may actually give you a, a, a small reduction in the number of potential injuries that we may see or aircraft damage. So in this case, we determined that in the, in the North Atlantic or in the Atlantic Ocean, we could estimate about $5.5 million in in the savings you know, due to injuries that could potentially be avoided with a Romeo display because of better planning, with, especially with the crew coordination. And then in the Pacific, we could expect uh, maybe $1.3 million in terms of additional savings. If we go to the next slide, I think that that gives you the summary of the findings. Again, these were the findings that we uh, found in this project. And probably the last slide, if we uh, go to that last one here, I think that the important here is that these savings, you know, depends on where you come from. Uh, the annual savings of 15 million 
Uh, some people may consider them to be small, but again, we think that this was a realistic savings. And you know, again, we are not pretending here that flights are going to save a thousand pounds of fuel per flight. It's actually 253 pounds. And in terms of the injury, you can see there that 5.5 and 1.3 million uh, dollars in potential exposure savings uh, due to you know, really harsh convective weather events. And I think that that finishes my presentation. Be glad to answer any questions that you may have. And again, I wanna thank the FAA for the opportunity to be able to do this kind of work and also to NCAR for providing so much information to us. If anybody has any questions, be glad to address them now. Tony, this is Matthias Steiner from NCAR. Uh, thank you for your uh, extensive presentation of the benefits analysis you did and what you learned from that. I wonder if you might be able to comment on how the longer outlook horizon may have changed the interaction between pilot, dispatch, and ATC, and if there would be some potential benefit there too, like workload reductions or stuff like that. And maybe it's also a question for, for Matt or, or Rocky, if he is on from a pilot perspective to comment on that. Thanks. Yeah, so thanks, Matthias. I mean, I'll just make a quick comment. Uh, our intent really was to do uh, surveys for pilots, dispatchers, and oceanic controllers. But, you know, it turns out that the pilots were really the group that really responded, that gave us a lot of feedback. In terms of the dispatching, uh, the dispatcher did not provide a lot of uh, feedback on this. I mean, we talked to these folks, and I think that they could see some benefits from Romeo, but I was perhaps, uh, since we didn't have a lot of evidence, you know, having a survey, although we actually uh, prepare a survey for them that was targeted specifically for dispatchers. I think that that's an item that in some ways we failed to, to get a lot of their feedback. So I would say pilots were very enthusiastic or mostly enthusiastic uh, and dispatchers probably anecdotally they said, but we didn't have enough statistical basis to be able to report as well as uh, for pilots. I don't know if any of the pilots wants to add any or to their comments. Hey, this is Randy Bass. Um, I don't know if you want to call it a complimentary project to this, but the uh, Lincoln Lab uh, for years has been doing the uh, offshore precipitation capability. And, and it's it's similar to CDO and CTO in that they, they take radar and uh, satellite data model data and, and machine learning and, and produce a, uh, a radar-like depiction um, similar to CDO, but it's over, right now, it's, it's pretty much over the uh, uh, Caribbean, uh, Atlantic, and Gulf of Mexico, expanding that into, uh, into the Pacific. But, and the plan is for that data to go into, uh, basically on the glass for the, the uh, controllers. Um, they've got monitors to uh, to look at it now, but those monitors are you know across the room in some cases uh, for the folks in like uh, Miami, Houston, New York, uh, Puerto Rico, areas like that. I th and we just completed a a uh, evaluation, user evaluation with them with our uh, uh, aviation weather demonstration and. Um, an evaluation team at uh, at the tech center. Uh, I think these two are very complementary in that if we can finally get you know, weather on the glass for the controllers and for the uh, the dispatchers, and get the weather up to the cockpit at the same time, I think we're going to see at least double what you're showing as far as a a a, a benefit because. Right now, the pilots, you know, in this study, we're doing it alone. In our study, in the in the Lincoln study, you know, the con controllers were doing it alone. If we can get everybody on the same page, I, th I think we'll see a lot of benefit down the road, and that's what we're working towards. 
Yeah, that's a great comment. Yeah. Yeah, we, we visited the Oceanic Center and we noticed that the controllers do have those uh, weather displays, but normally they are not overlaid on their, on their uh, stations. So it's always a little bit more difficult for them to be able to gauge, you know, where the weather is. And I think they let pilots basically to do that. So I'll stop here. Yeah.